next conversation, we're going to turn to the potential of agrovoltaics and what they offer farmers and the planet. So welcoming, uh, please welcome Ethan Winter, the National Smart Solar Director for American Farmland Trust. Hey there. <laughs> Round of applause. You know, you know the drill. We have Anya Tenyas, an Associate Vice President of Impact and Business Development at Soul Systems, and Luli, Lucy, sorry, Lucy, Lucy Bullock Seeger, the Chief Strategy Officer for Light Star Renewables. Round of applause again. <laughs> A few more in kind partners to thank. We have Acme Smoked Fish, Little Sesame, Cary Dairy, Ireland, and ConAgra. So thanks to all of them. So nice to sit down with all of you. Uh, Ethan, I have to start with you because. Some of the folks watching and, and even some of the folks in the room may not be familiar with the idea of agrovoltaics. Can you give us just a little primer? Yeah, and first of all, thank you so much for having us here. Um, we're at a really interesting intersection in this country where we are needing to grow our energy rapidly. Solar is the fastest, cheapest way to deploy new energy. We have trend lines that are really unfavorable for farm viability across the country, more challenges. We've been talking about that all morning. And there's a, a potential collision of energy and agriculture in solar, because the best lands for solar tend to be really good agricultural land. How many of you have heard about this happening in your communities, where there's concern about solar and farmland? So agrivoltaics is an opportunity to combine the best of the solar energy technology, the innovation there, with a regenerative approach, where we're integrating agricultural production by design with farmer input on the same land that we're generating solar energy. And it turns out this is quite an idea globally, and we're trying to figure out how to do this here in the United States. And that's why American Farmland Trust has really developed, as one of its core smart solar principles, a platform on agrivoltaics. It's a fancy word. Um, you might think of it as agrisolar, agricultural dual use, or farmer energy. I love it. And it goes back to what we heard before about common sense approaches to, to farming. So Anna and Lucy, I'm wondering if you can each share an example of how agrovoltaics is supporting the livelihoods of farmers that you both work directly with all the time. Yeah, so we, we are excited uh, with one of our projects that we're actually doing a ribbon cutting for later this nice. week uh, in southern Illinois to be integrating a partnership with American Farmland Trust to be growing row crops underneath our solar panels. The crop that we're going to be growing is Kernza, a perennial grain developed by the Land Institute. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's incredibly exciting to be able to see and do underneath our projects. And we've it's been a long time coming, coming through a lot of research, um, but to see it in practice and to actually see the planting and seeding happening, which will happen the week after our ribbon cutting is exciting. And the farmers and landowners of our project or the land underneath our project are going to be the ones helping out with that. They're gonna be taking their tractors and seeding. They're gonna be helping with the harvesting and really integrating themselves into that project. We also have a partnership with an organization called Foodworks who will be helping to break down the barriers of that land access issue that we've been talking about. So they'll have access to one acre plots to be able to provide new farmers and beginning farmers in the area um, access to the land to grow specialty crops underneath our solar projects. Um, that's land that they will have, you know, without having to put any money down or pay for long term. And then we'll see that growth of those specialty crops underneath our panels as well. It's so, so exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Anna. We've had, we have mostly, we've, I've heard a lot about this as kind of like the next generation. And that's every single farming partner that we have has that issue. And nobody has a 401k. The, gen, the next generation has uh, an off-farm job. But we have the first meeting about agrivoltaics with our farmers, and the second meeting, the next generation is there. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, because of the financial stability, and we talked, I've heard a lot about pivoting and diversification, and that also takes money <laughs> and, and risk. And so what the agrivoltaics projects and the partnership with solar developers like ourselves is we pay them to farm the property. And that covers their operational costs for the year so that they can then invest, and I heard circular economy from the last speaker right, too, right. Um, reinvest in their farm, 
in their communities. And so we just cut a ribbon on a project in the town of Montgomery in New York. Nice. Um, that, that is a town that banned solar on prime, prime farmland, uh -huh. um, except for agrivoltaics. And so this isn't farming next to, this is farming in and around the array. And I invite everybody in the room to come up uh, next time we have a tour, because it's very exciting. Um, the farmers are excited. They came hip to hip with us this whole time. Um, this is enabling them to invest in their family. The son was there. Um, he wasn't sure if he wanted to do farming for the rest of his life, sure. but now he sees a viable enterprise. And so they can carry that forward for the next at least 35 years. Sure. So sure. Um, that's meaningful. It's hay. We're doing two acres of vegetable production with a new entry farmer. So there's two farmers on this singular site. Uh, because we want to demonstrate that specialty crops and commodity crops um, can work well together. Um, I love, we, we were talking about when we were walking the site last week, that we're literally standing on milk <laughs> because it's hay. Um, this hay goes to dairy uh, production down the street. So we are really, really helping farmers see the possibility. Um, now, is it the most beautiful open space to farm? No, it's a different way of farming, yeah, but yeah. that's how farmers have really done this. Um, over the last, like forever, in time right. immemorial, they've right. pivoted. Innovate. Yeah. Innovate. Yeah. Innovate. Constant, constant. So it's just a new way of farming. So. And I love that, that you're providing these new opportunities for young and older farmers alike, but you're preserving the land, which is what AFT, American Farmland Trust, is all about. So yeah. that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Lucy, you told me that you're seeing a lot of bipartisan support for, for agrovoltaics. Can you talk about what you're hearing from members of Congress? So, and Ethan had mentioned that we have... Everybody in this room uses energy. Everybody in this room is not going to be stopping using their, their phones. <laughs> Everybody is using data. Um, so we, we are seeing a huge hockey stick in terms of need for energy generation. And solar is, is probably the way that we should be doing it. Um, and that is a reality on both sides of the aisle. They understand that. Yeah. We have corporations in this room. We have businesses in this room that need data. They need energy. And that's not going to go away if we want to be competitive in general. Um, and so we have seen when we talk to them, because farmland loss is a very real issue. And I'm not proud to say that my county, where I come from in Massachusetts, is number two on the, the farmlands under threat in the report, <laughs> um, which really drove home for me that like it's, it's everywhere across the country. Yeah. Um, and so that's what it's impacting everybody on both sides of the aisle. And when we bring this solution with agrivoltaics to the table, it's a whole new conversation. Um, and we're opening doors with people who otherwise were anti-solar. Um, and But when you put the business case together and you help them understand and connect the dots between solar and what we know to be true about rural economic development and strong farms and strong farming families, then there's the aha moment. Mm -hmm. So OK, mm -hmm. we can have both, and we can do this properly. Um, and if we trust farmers, then we can make it happen. Right, so right. that's it's. A really, we've seen that throughout the whole, well, we've been also starting, we started a trade association called the Solar and Farming Association, solarandfarming.org, if you're interested. Um, and that's what we're basing this on, is that it's not a partisan issue. Right. This is about farmers, this is about food, this is about energy, these are all issues that we are all dealing with. So getting together and, and figuring it out is, is really appealing to both yeah. sides. Is that aha moment for uh, people on both sides of the aisle happening in your work in Illinois? It definitely is. I mean, it's it's something that we try to hit home as much as we possibly can with conversations with elected officials and with the people in the community. You know, it's that same approach of this is energy being harvested from the sun, but we're also going to harvest and continue to maintain, you know, the farming that has been here in this thriving community or has helped your community thrive. Right. And it's also a way to create community resilience. Yeah. I've heard that word used a lot today. Um, and so being able to connect our projects to the land, to the community, to the youth, and ensuring that they get access to these new and exciting and innovative ideas so that they can see for themselves, OK, there's an opportunity for me to stay in my community right. and, and be here and take over the farm from my parents and my uncle and, um, and really you know, make a difference in helping my community thrive and succeed. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Ethan, can you talk about what's happening at the state level for support of agrovoltaics? 
Yeah, you said earlier um, that the states are leading, and that's very true right now. Uh, we heard earlier from uh, three states, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. Um, what they didn't have time to talk about maybe was that those states are leading on considerations for agricultural solar, really thinking about research and demonstration funding, uh, incentives in the market, and even bid preferences for agrivoltaic projects. Um, so a lot of that innovation is happening right here in the Northeast. Um, we're also seeing interest in states like Texas, California, Colorado, you know, West, where water considerations are gonna really come into play. Uh, and it turns out that how you design the solar can really affect soil moisture. And it may actually be that you can uh, have similar production with less water mm. if you design the solar uh, to accommodate for agriculture. That's a game changer for more arid parts of the country. Um, so we're looking at the states. Um, there is still some uh, encouragement here at the federal level. Um, AFT has launched a partnership with the National Renewable Energy Lab, and it's called AgriTech. And we are providing no-cost technical assistance through NREL for folks who have startup ideas for agrivoltaic projects. So we're working with farmers, tribes, and communities that are trying to innovate a project on their own. Um, and we think that that's going to help us really get a sense of where all that innovation is happening, right. and then feed that up to the state so that they can develop uh, more incentives there. Uh, right here in New York, uh, we're soon going to hear about a new research and demonstration fund and selections there that will uh, involve a lot of new research here. So New York needs to lead, and um, I think we're going to see that soon. Exciting. I, I want to ask all of you to end on a call to action. It's been really important for me to end these panels on, on something that people can take away, whether they're here in the room or listening online. I would say to the companies or anybody that's listening online that has energy needs, ask for agrivoltaics. Um, there's more and more people who are uh, turning towards it. We have demonstrated LightStar has over 800 megawatts of agrivoltaics in development or going in the ground across the country. It's here. We have m more than 10 gigawatts of agrivoltaics across the country in general. So ask for it. Um, and support your local developers. Um, write a letter. Um, make phone calls. You know, we need to get these in the ground faster um, because we need to support farmers. We need more energy at the same time. So I can't stress it enough. Just reach out and, and support agrivoltaics and, and ask for it. Thank you. Going off of that, corporates have done it already. That's why we are sitting up here. That's why Soul Systems is sitting up here, because we have a partner that has chosen to do this as a part of their projects, and they've invested in us, and our financiers have invested in us to make this happen. So it's not new anymore. It's happening. So let's do it more. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, there's private capital that can be a part of this as well. And we need those partners to work with us to help see that succeed um, and help fill the gaps where we can, where federal funding has been frozen or has gone away. You know, there are these partnerships that we can develop to really make these projects happen at scale. Amazing, thank you. Ethan, you get the final word. <laughs> uh, boy, well, building on Anna's point on private capital, um, there's a huge role for institutional investors and impact investors in the philanthropies to really step into this space yeah, because yeah. we are now solving for energy, we're solving for farm viability, we're solving for climate solutions, and it's not just a boutique theoretical idea. Mm -hmm. um, there's work happening right here in the Northeast, uh, and we're pulling examples from across the world. Uh, in Europe and Asia where this is happening as well. So um, really encourage those who have the resources to demand that we're seeing value-added solar that's supporting farm viability. And that will move the needles. Um, last thing I'll mention is partner with AFT. Sure. <laughs> um, we have some really cool, in addition to Agritech, uh, new initiatives. One is called Prosperity Partners, where we're working directly with industry to help their projects be more farm-centric and uh, integrating soil health best practices. And so we're kind of rolling up our sleeves, getting under the hood, and really helping these projects be better. Uh, and we have another initiative called Farmers Powering Communities with a company called Reactivate and Edelin Renewables. We're actually helping to find farmers who want to do agrivoltaic projects and originating those projects through FPC so we can show the industry just how far we can go with this. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be outside. If folks uh, are interested and inspired by what we're doing, we're happy to talk more. Thank you all so much. Give them a round of applause. Thank you all. Thank you.